Good evening, I'm Bob Garner, and welcome back for another edition of Ask the DNR. We've got some fine folks representing the department here, great phone answers. So if you'd like uh, to get a question in front of these folks, just call the number at the bottom of your screen, 844-975-3343, and we'll be right back. And joining us tonight, uh, again, our all-star lineup. I think it's been the same way for, what, seven years now? Mm, something like okay, that. Okay, we begin with Mark Tonello, who's a fisheries biologist out of Cadillac and uh, fine, fine fisherman, too. Uh, uses the resource and one of my good friends. Thanks, uh, thanks for being back here, Mark. Also, Dean Molnar, and you've seen him almost every show for 16, 17 years. And uh, good buddy and, uh, and, and a guy who, who loves doing this because he likes answering those questions. And, of course, we have the uh, Russ Mason, the Dr. Russ Mason, who is the chief of the wildlife division to answer. I know there will be plenty of deer questions tonight, wolf questions, other things too. So please uh, go to the phone and call in your question. Answering the phones tonight is, is on your left is Dave Hopp. Dave Hopp is the... Uh, is the, the gentleman that works the desk at the Cadillac field office. And questions that don't get answered tonight, he'll be glad to uh, field those questions if you call him uh, tomorrow at the DNR field office. And then there's Katie Keene. She's the wildlife uh, outreach tech. And Katie Keene has been uh, around these wildlife matters and forestry matters for a long, long time. Great gal, great communicator, and also just a little bit of background used to be a conservation officer in the state of Missouri, although she's originally from Michigan. And then we have Ed Shaw, and Ed Shaw is the park interpreter at the Carl T. Johnson Center, which is really kind of at the corner by Mitchell State Park at 115 one, uh, and M55. If you haven't been to the Carl T. Johnson Center to celebrate the heritage of the hunting and fishing in this great old state of Michigan, well, you need to get there. You need to get there. It is fantastic. Ed does a great job. You can always call, find out uh, the hours are open, and you won't be disappointed by making a, making a visit there. Bring the kiddos, too. It's all set up for the kiddos. Uh, the other thing I'd like to do, too, is to just take a moment uh, to talk about Mark Knee. Mark Knee passed away several weeks ago. Mark was a uh, biologist for the Department of Natural Resources, a wildlife biologist, and he, it was an unfortunate skiing accident up at uh, Crystal Mountain. And, and here he is with a picture with his uh, children, his two sons, Adam and Carter. Uh, Russ, he was, he was a fine outdoors, I mean, he was a great person, obviously, and a, and a great biologist, he but he was just, just a fine outdoorsman, he too. He was a great guy, and like the folks up towards Wolverine say, he was a member of the conservation. Uh, when we had his funeral, there were folks there from the DNR, from the tribes, from the Fish and Wildlife Service, from the Forest Service, three or 400 people. It was a real sad day for the state of Michigan. It, it was a sad day, and, and you know, I knew Mark uh, not all that well, but he was a heck of a steelhead guy, too. I mean, the guy could do it all. He could do it all. We are going to miss Mark Knee and, uh, and to his family, uh, our sympathy and, and our best. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go uh, right away uh, to Dean and, um, and also Mark, you weigh in on this. Uh, these are the frequently asked questions that Dave Hopp gets at the DNR desk in Cadillac. Update on the use of certain lures to prevent anglers from snagging fish. That's changed a little bit? Yes, that has changed. It just changed in uh, this past month, well, just a couple of weeks ago here in the NRC meeting. Uh, this regulation was adopted. It's basically an anti-snagging regulation um, designed to protect, uh, you know, salmon. And so basically what we've done is we're trying to favor tackle that we know salmon will bite. Okay, so you can, so what it did, the regulation banned the use of treble hooks mm -hmm. on uh, the Betsy River, the Manistee River below Tippy Dam, Bear Creek, and the Big Sable River below Hamlin Dam. And so no treble hooks unless they are attached to a lure. So okay. you can still use a legitimate lure like a spinner, a spoon, a plug, Rap a body lure. bait, exactly. Or Things that we know in the lower peninsula. Exactly, yep. Things that we know salmon will bite. 
Okay, but what you won't be able to use is the treble hook yarn rig that is used for snagging, and you also won't be able to use the, the lead torpedoes that were by letter of the law legal, but everyone knows they're nothing more than a snag hook. A snagging tool, and, and all you can find all that in the fish or in the fish digest. Uh, well, it's not in the guide because it was just passed. It's not in the printed okay. guide. But if you go on our website and click on fishing, right at the top, the, the top bullet right now, that's the new regs. And, and that's because the NRC really didn't get a chance or really didn't get that uh, into the law. It's not the fisheries did, but really didn't get that into the regs until, uh, until too late in the game to publish it, right? Correct. Okay. Um, and, and Dino, uh, I think I know the answer to this. Do you have to buy a base license to be able to purchase a fishing license? No. No, you that don't. Is, no, you don't have to have that $10 yep. small game license. Nope. You need, a, you need a base license for any of the hunting licenses, but fishing is a separate, separate deal. Okay, what do I do? Uh, what do I do? I kind of sense. Do you do? Uh, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> Russ, what do I do if I see baby animals like fawns and rabbits that looked orphaned? Leave look them orphan. alone. Leave them. <laughs> Leave them where they are. More often than not, their parents have hit them and they're off doing something else. They'll be back. If you move them, it's worse for them every, by far. Every spring we have, to, we have to do this. So save those baby animals by leaving them alone, right? Okay. Next thing is the salvage permit. How does that work? Well, basically, that's, it's new, relatively new. It came in. That's roadside. Road yeah, pickup. It's roadkill. Yeah. Yeah. Road pick kill. up road yeah. Road yeah. kills. Okay. Now, what, and, I, and I encourage folks, if they're interested in that, be sure you go on our website to find out what you can and can't pick up. Because basically you can pick up some small game, but you can't pick up anything migratory. You can't pick up a elk, a moose, a wolf, a turkey, some of the uh, species of concern for us. Uh, anything that needs a harvest tag, a uh, fur bearer, you can't pick up. So, you know, it's basically for small game. And it really was designed for deer. Mm -hmm. People want to pick up deer and use them as bait. Basically Coyote what you have bait. to do, if you for a deer, let's just talk about a deer. Uh, if you want to pick up a deer, you're going to do it three, three ways. You can either call the department and notify them that they, you want to pick it up, or you can contact them, uh, contact us by the web. There's a form that they can fill out or call 911. And if you request a permit, we can send you a permit. The permit needs to stay with the deer. Um, but, you know, small game, you don't have to call for a permit if you don't want to, you can ju you have, but you have to keep a record. And again, go on the web, you can see what you can and can't do. And of course, if you have any questions, call into the Operations Service Centers and we can really Dave spell Hoppel it out. Dave Hopple answer your questions Absolutely. and he's really good at it. Mm -hmm. Next thing, uh, Mark, how are the weirs doing? Uh, you're, you're taking right now, uh, right now, steelhead eggs on the Little Manistee, right? Correct, yep, that's the only weir that's in operation in, uh, in the spring is the Little Manistee weir. Uh, we did about a day and a half worth of egg take this week, and uh, basically we got into fish that weren't ripe enough to, to take their eggs. Because it's been so cold, we have plenty of fish on hand, they're just not ready to spawn yet. So we're going to hold off and we'll go again uh, next Tuesday, and we should be able to finish it up in two, maybe three days of, uh, of good egg take. You will spawn no fish before it's time, right? Correct. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's wasting them if you do. And the new bass rags basically... Yeah, this, the possession season is still in effect. Right. Yeah, the possession season hasn't changed. The only thing that changed is that now there is a, a, a year-round catch and immediate release season on bass. So if you want to go bass fishing right now, you can. You just have to put them back. You can't put them in your live well for a while and then put them back. they got to go back in the water right after you catch them. And by the way, we, uh, we are taking uh, social media questions to Twitter and Facebook. I don't know a thing about Twitter. I got a little idea about Facebook. This question comes in, when does the Natural Resources Commission decide, Russ, how many antlerless tags will be issued for each deer management unit? Well, we start that process in May and finish it up in, in June. Folks should remember, though, that now that we have standardized regulations, we won't be changing any of our deer regulations this year. We're holding them constant so we can actually evaluate the, the difference that it makes. Okay, yeah, you have to for the science, don't you? Hey, why is the bear season, the caller from Lake City, Russ, wants to know why the, why the uh, uh, bear season, which would be the Red Oak area, I'm assuming, so much shorter than anywhere else? It's short, well, for a variety of reasons, but mostly it's bec because the resource is actually a little smaller than in some of the other units. We have a lot more bears in the UP. We have those multiple seasons in the UP. The seasons are shorter, and the quotas are lower here in either Red Oak or over in the Baldwin unit. Okay, Courtney Jerome's hometown, uh, Lake Orion. They want to know, is it, is it legal to take mushrooms from state land? 
Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. If, if you walk by a morel that's a right to take and don't take it, something's wrong. You bet. Wrong in fact, yep. that's coming up pretty quick here. You usually always kind of look around uh, trout season opener yeah. about, about start looking. And up in Alpena, folks want to know it's side by side. Okay, uh, with an RV, can you uh, drive it on the road, or do you need a license to drive it on the road? Well, you can either have a street legal if it can be um, uh, put made street legal, or you need to contact the county because county by county, they have the ability to be able to open up certain sections of their roads, and that's the county gives them an, an enabling <laughs> ordinance to the townships to be able to do that. So they really need to check. We have nothing to do with that on the roadways, mm -hmm. so check with the county and the townships that they want to operate in. Again, the number to call is 844-975-3343. If you'd like to ask a question, this one comes from Lapeer. In, in Lapeer, this, this lady has been told she cannot fish within the city limits because of the hunting restrictions. One thing doesn't have anything to do with the other, do they? No, one thing doesn't have anything to do. No, hunting restrictions, right, um, but not for fishing. If she has any uh, maybe specifics on that, I'd suggest contacting the, where was that, Bob, which county? That, that was Lapeer. Lapeer. Um, contact the um, um, Detroit office uh, and find out the Operations Service Center and find out what may be the specifics of uh, regulations or restrictions. Shouldn't be anything to do with fishing. Folks from Edmore want to know too, Dean, um, um, if uh, in the hunting guide it says there's a nine round limit for pistols in the hunting guide? Is, uh, is this a statewide reg or just in the shotgun zone? Uh, I. I'm not sure on that one. There, there is no. There is no. I, I didn't think there was. No, there isn't. I saw. There's I'm not a sure. five-round semi-automatic. Right, semi-automatic, but there rifle. isn't anything on a pistol. There isn't. Okay, okay. Um, I have domestic ducks up in Alpena. Mm -hmm. Do duck uh, hunters uh, have the ability to, to hunt them? I suppose if they're flying around in a duck marsh, if they end up in the wrong place at the right time, yeah, they can be taken. Okay, and, and folks from Mackinac City say, hey, the moose population is on the decline. Why do we have wolves? Well, we, we really didn't order those wolves up in the first place, did we? We didn't, and there are a lot of things going on there. It is true that wolves probably are having something to do with decline in wolves or moose that we're seeing, but at the same time, there are a lot of other factors. Moose are right on the edge of the range in Michigan, and if you look at Minnesota or the Dakotas, other places, their numbers are declining. Come about 50, 60 years and I, I won't be here, and Moose probably won't be either in the great state of Michigan. Okay. It was a noble experiment, though. It was a great experiment. Yep, yep, and everybody had great intentions, but, but, but Mother Nature rules the roost, right, Mark? You say that all the time. You could do what biologists do, but Mother Nature rules we're, the roost. We're not in charge. We're she not is. in charge, yeah. <laughs> hey, for us, too, from Saginaw, sure. Steel Bridge next to Fish Point was removed in August of 2014. Doesn't know why, but are there plans to replace it? No, there aren't any plans to replace it. We are going to put in a parking lot that makes it easier for folks to get out to the bay. Sort of the issue that was going on there is folks were using it to access the refuge and maybe take a couple of shots where they shouldn't. That was the complaint we were hearing from a lot of folks, and so we chose to just make it easier to get where folks wanted to go and sort of solve that problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, up in from Pickford. Okay. Uh, Mineral or salt block? How do you make it legal in baiting? Uh, how do you spread it over a 10 by 10 area? Well, Dino, what do you want to you, take? You don't break? have to. Um, salt blocks are considered bait. It still has to fall within your two gallons. So if you've got a typical cow size salt block, that's probably your two gallons. But that particular item does not have to be busted up and spread around. Okay, from Houghton Lake, uh, the gentleman wants to know, well, when were we going to stop doing the turkey license application and go to just purchase one over the counter? Well, essentially, you can purchase one over you the counter. You can purchase one over the counter almost anywhere that you would want to go turkey hunting. Right. We still treat them as, a, as something special, more like big game than small game, and that conversation comes up every now and again. But with turkey numbers declining in Michigan probably, as well as the rest of the Midwest, that isn't likely to change into a small game species anytime soon. Yeah, there were, there were just... Uh, uh, Missouri, which used to be the, like the leading state, has now fallen uh, mm -hmm. fallen off. So there's, there's been turkey shortages and stuff. Michigan's and not as bad, though. No, we're great. We're still in the top 10 in the nation. And by the way, we're not exactly sure why. The, it could be changes in agricultural practice. It could be just a sort of a natural dip. It could be it could be a lot of things. We're, we're not sure. And in fact, the Midwest Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies is looking at that right now across the Midwest. Trying to trying to figure out the science on it. Sheboygan folks want to know: 
223, 556 okay to use deer hunting? They are. Aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. It, what, it, uh, what we define as a uh, rifle would be its center fire. We don't regulate the cartridge other than it has to be a center fire for a rifle. So it can't use a rim fire. Okay, okay. This, this is pretty interesting. Carp Lake, this is a great question. And, and I've had this question myself. Both parties have fishing licenses and you have six tip-ups, okay? Can you fish with someone else's name on those tip-ups? Somebody you're fishing with? They all say Bob Garner on them. There's two of us out there. You're not likely to get a ticket over that, are you? No, something like that. We want to make sure that there's a name on them so that the, you know, if somebody leaves one out, the officer can follow up. But honestly, realistically, they've got some names on them. You, you and I fishing together, maybe I've got four, you've got two. And also are going to use their discretion. We have three, you've got three, they're marked, we're good. Yeah, yeah. Letter of the law is one thing, but 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 to try to comply. And, right. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're going to do well. How many buck tags, doe tags, and turkey licenses were sold in 2014 compared to 2013? I know what they're getting at. Mm -hmm. uh, the license fee increase uh, stymied some sales, but it always has. It has. I've looked increase. through five of them, and every one of them, there's been at least a 10 percent drop the following year. That increase does result, did result in, in a decline both in resident and non-resident, but especially in non-resident. And we're very concerned with how pricing is potentially impacting participation. You know, the duck stamp is going to go to $25 this year. Electronically, it's going to be $27.50. The federal duck stamp. New bed, federal duck stamp. And all of us in the fly we are extremely concerned with that, and we're trying to push the service to give us either a kid stamp, so a, a low price stamp to take children, or uh, perhaps a, a mentored stamp. You're trying to get somebody interested in duck hunting, for example, maybe a stamp that's good for a week that yeah. costs five bucks or six bucks or something, because twenty seven fifty is a lot of money when you add it up to everything else. And when you compare it to the price of price of non-toxic uh, uh, shot and things like that. It isn't that much, but boy, if it holds anybody from going out in the woods. But you still got to be able to fund, fund the conservation effort. You got to be able to fund the conservation, and we continue to search for different ways of getting that done. Right, right. Mark, is use of trout beads pegged above a bear hook legal? Uh, yes, it is legal if you are not fishing in gear-restricted water. So if you're fishing in a flies-only water, then it would not be legal. A bead is not classified as a fly. Uh, but if you're in standard water, um, you'll want to have the, the bead relatively close to the hook, within a couple inches probably. But yes, that is a legal rig. Okay. Good, good question. Okay. Yeah, I get lots of good questions. One mm -hmm. of my favorite little towns, too, up north, Lovells. The town of Lovells. Uh, <laughs> great people up there. Uh, when does the DNR consider a bear a nuisance? And if it is considered a nuisance, will you come out and try to trap it? Yes. Let's answer the second part first. A yeah. nuisance bear or habituated bear, we're going to try to do something to that animal. Either trap it and relocate it, or maybe take the bear, depending on the circumstance. When is it a nuisance? Well, I don't know, when he's on your porch, when he's in the yard, when he doesn't leave, when he's in town, when, when he's knocking over somebody's you. apiary, when he's in the apple orchard doing stuff. Apiary, should... that's a big fancy word for your beehives. Beehive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When he's in your beehives, it's, it's, it's well, you know, there are lots of things. And it's a common sense thing just as well. Just because somebody says they are, I saw a bear in my yard, come get him. Well, we're not going to. Yeah, right, if right. If he's in the yard and he won't leave, well, we'll rethink that. And if that. You're, you're feeding him in the yard... Uh, you're yeah. going to be urged to cut that out. There's, so. a, there's a phrase we like to use. A fed bear is a dead bear. Yeah. Like 100% of the time. Bear always loses them. in a human or encounter that way. Well, so. and, and, a, and a good thing to remind our listeners is that just that, it's bear season. They're starting to come out of their dens. Take your bird feeders down. If you yes. got problems, if you think you got problems, take your, take that food source away. They're gonna go. They're gonna go find some food. I, I can't. Right. I'm proof positive of if 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 you don't put it out there, they won't come back. So, okay. And a question on the woodchucks. We have never had a question on woodchucks here, and I love this. They are they're one of the coolest animals going. Okay. And they're good to eat. They're good. Yeah, to eat. they're great to eat. I've eaten them mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, grizzled, thick-set marmots. <laughs> Use that to describe me, I guess. Hey, woodchucks from Saginaw, can you trap or shoot them? You darn tootin' you can, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, um, and, and go ahead and try. The only thing you're going to find if you try to eat them, and they are good because they're vegetarians, mm -hmm. and they're, they're great eating, but the trouble is, is it's kind of like taking the hide off a coconut. Well, you know, you know, Bob, that's something else, too, is um, woodchuck hunting. A lot of guys want to hunt woodchucks. 
a lot of times farmers that won't give you permission to come on your property for something else will for woodchucks. Oh, yes. So, I mean, so get out there and ask permission. If they've yeah. got horses, they've got animals, Absolutely. they uh, take some pride in their land, they want those woodchucks gone. I've seen and farmers actually pay to have woodchucks shot. Yes. So there's 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 a lot of reasons to do this. Have 223 will travel. The first <laughs> harbinger of spring, yes. Okay. And how do you go about changing the law about perch spearing? Joe from Sheboygan wants to know. I think the only place you could do that is Lake St. Clair, isn't Lake it? Lake St. Clair right now. Um, that, would be, that would be something that we've got. Uh, well, Mark, you talked to the uh, committees, the fisheries committees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know where we're at with this, with that particular issue, other than to know it is still legal. Right, it, it is brought up. We have a cold and warm water fisheries committee that's got a bunch of uh, constituent groups, mm -hmm. citizens on them, and I know I sit on both of those, and they are actually looking at that and talking about it, but one of the first steps is to, you know, we're taking the information, get it to the, the, the division, fisheries division, we'll bring it to the committees, and then we'll make recommendations up to the National Resource Commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Folks from, I think, Grayling want to know why turkey season always starts on a, on a Monday. It's kind of just traditional uh, and not the weekend. But you get a weekend and all those Monday permits always include a weekend too, You do. Right? It, it can be hard, especially if you're taking kids. But it's the way we do things here in Michigan. Except they can, except they can go on the weekend. And they can. Yeah. My neighbors, <laughs> folks from Sheboygan, you talk about problems in this world. Holy smokes. My neighbors are burning a piano. Can they do that? <laughs> Hopefully it's out of the house, huh, <laughs> Daddy? Well, that probably could be construed as illegal disposal of solid waste or open burning. Uh, so I would probably not. Uh, that'd be more of an open burning type situation. And there's toxins in there. And there's certain things that you can't burn to new rule changes in the last few years. So in a situation like that, I'd say probably not. It's, is it, uh, this one comes in social media. Is it legal to hunt deer with a crossbow during the rifle season? Absolutely. 10-4, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can do that. Good question, though. Uh, this is a correction. Folks are correcting us uh, from Milford. They said, do you really call 9-11 for a salvage permit from a dispatcher? That was what the, uh, the law the, says. The, the, that's what the law says. The legislature put that through, that you can either call the department um, or you can go on our website or you can call 911. Mm -hmm. And before you get mad at the department for, for making a 911 case out of it, that's the state law. That's passed by the legislature. DNR can't change that, okay? Um, okay, side by side's over 50 inches, but over our ORV trail is under 50 inches. Uh, we want a new, uh, 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 new ride trail by, uh, and by ORV licenses, what can we do? Iosco County. Well, basically, we have ORV trails, we have ORV routes, uh, we have some mixed trails around the state. You know, the state is becoming and working towards becoming the, the trail state. You know, I would suggest that they would, you know, get a hold of the uh, Parks Division that is working on the trails and Forest Management Division and talk locally about what they would like to see. But, you know, we have different user groups. Uh, we have to have different trail systems for them all. So I would start with their local office and talk to them about see if there's anything in the works. Um, but we have to, you know, we've got routes that everybody can ride on. We have some routes that motorcycles can only ride on. You're right. You know, and then the smaller quads, the under 50 inches. So, you know, talk locally with your groups to right. see where they're going with them. Yeah, they usually, and they, be, they, they usually are in touch with DNR. And I think this question from, comes from Durand. Uh, why do they put elk in lower uh, Michigan instead of the UP? That's a really good question, and, and, and it makes, makes a lot of sense that they went in the Lower Peninsula. Well, it makes great 1918, sense. 1918, was it? They, the first, they started showing up around 1918 from a variety of sources, the reason being that elk are native to the Lower Peninsula, as were bison, for example. They yep. were never native to the UP. Yep. Now, the next question is, would elk make it in the UP? Will they make it in northern Wisconsin now? And every now and again, that conversation comes up, and that still remains a topic for discussion. Yeah, and, and, and elk are, they just have different needs. And, uh, and, 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 and really, you probably don't want elk everywhere in the state of Michigan. They're, they're really tough on crops. That's, that's and, one of the issues. Any place we could put them in the UP, they're likely not to stay there. If we put them in the Porkies, they'd walk out of the Porkies and end up in somebody's farm field. Shelby Township. Back in your home county, yep. Macomb County. Yep. Okay, Mark, Shelby Township, turkey hunting. They hunt 234, which is the one everybody can buy. Can you hunt in Union ZZ? I don't know why you couldn't. Yeah. 
you just can't hunt on, on you can't, public land. You can't hunt on public, public land, right? Land, yeah. Right. But you just can't yeah. hunt on public land with that one. And um, and and well, I don't know where we are time-wise here, but uh, anyway, uh, so we need to get going, I guess. Okay. Well, let's let's do that. But let me let me preface this by telling you we're going to be back in just a couple of minutes. We're going to show you a, uh, a segment from Destination Michigan, which is a show I do on Monday nights with the great folks uh, here at CMU Public Television. And this one happens to deal with cowboy action shooting uh, up at Harbor Springs and 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 uh, Bay, Tom Bailey's up there. You'll see Courtney shoot uh, from Destination Michigan. It was just a hoot. So enjoy that for a few minutes while we take a break. Call your questions in 844-975-3343, 844-975-3343, and we will try and get them answered uh, in the last half hour of the show. Thank Thank you. Our final stop tonight is with Bob Garner. We all know how much he loves the outdoors and smell of gun smoke in the air. And his visit to Harbor Springs tonight is no exception. Here's Bob Garner at the Harbor Springs Outdoors Club. This week finds me in Emmett County, one of my favorite places involved in something called cowboy action shooting. There are a group of shooters who work tirelessly to promote and enjoy our history of the Old West. Folks who watch Gunsmoke and Bonanza through the 50s and 60s on television. Folks like me who as kids went to see every Western every time they could and wore their cowboy hats and strapped on their cap guns for the Saturday matinee. This group keeps that history alive by dressing in clothes of the period and using six guns and rifles and shotguns reminiscent of the Old West. Tom Bailey, executive director of the Little Travers Conservancy, is also known as North Side Ranger, and he talked with this old sod buster about this club and how much fun they have. Can you tell me about this Harbor Springs group of guys? I mean, you're, you're for all over Emmett County, I suppose, but, but they pretty much identify with Harbor Springs. Sure, it's the Harbor Springs Outdoors Club, and they were kind enough to set aside a piece of their club property for us to try cowboy action shooting. Uh, I'm kind of a latecomer to it, really. I didn't set it up, but I was uh, involved to start with and enjoy coming out once in a while, not, not as often as these guys who are more dedicated. It's a diverse bunch of guys, and a lot of them do other serious shooting. There are serious skeet shooters and rifle shooters, competitive shooters, but sometimes we like to get together and get the single action pistols and the lever guns out and just have fun. So for each shoot, they set up scenarios. Now, now do you actually walk into a saloon and and look for somebody cheating at poker or something, or what, what do you do? At, at some of the big shoots you do. Um, we're a little more uh, low key here at the Harbor Springs Outdoor Club about it, but at some of the sanctioned shoots and the big shoots, it gets to be some really fancy scenarios. And, and of course, there's a competitive element to it. It is a timed event. Uh, a lot of times we don't even use a clock here because we just like to shoot. But sometimes <laughs> when you burst through the saloon doors, that's what starts the clock with your shooting and you shoot normally two pistols, a rifle, and a shotgun, and, and you're trying to shoot as fast as you can. And um, you're shooting metal plates for the most part. Right. And how much fun is this for everyone? Well, even Courtney Jerome got involved in it, and did she shoot well? That's beautiful, Court. That deserves a yee-haw, yeah! There's something about stepping into the days of the old Lone, Ra Lone Ranger and Matt Dillon and, uh, there sure and Ponderosa is. and Bonanza and all that stuff. And the feel of that gun leather around your hips, it's, um, it's fun. You feel like John Wayne sometimes? <laughs> well, I don't know about John Wayne, but it feels pretty good. <laughs> Ah, that was one of my favorite segments ever on uh, on Destination Michigan, and in uh, Matt and Chris and Courtney, the folks that work with on that show, what a great job they do! Monday night, seven thirty, right here on CMU Public Television. Be sure and catch it. Uh, we've got a, a correction, or not a correction, just just 
right. Let, let's I, let's talk about that nine nine round. Uh, right. I, I see where they were, where the confusion was a little bit. That is in the that is in the limited firearm zone. The old shotgun zone is where you can only have nine rounds uh, maximum in your uh, handgun. Okay. It doesn't pertain to Northern Lower or the UP. Okay, it does not. Okay. Caller in Montmorency County, uh, can a person obtain a burning permit from the fire department when there's no burning in the county? If I cannot get a burning permit, why is the DNR burning on state land and not uh, waiting until all us taxpayers can burn at the same time? You know, let me just throw something in here. I know, and you're probably not going to like this caller, but even those people that work for the DNR and those that were commissioners and stuff, we all pay taxes, okay? <laughs> you, you didn't invent that just for yourself, okay? <laughs> right, as far as, far as uh, burning permits go, Bob, um, uh, folks can either, and I think maybe we're gonna have a graphic with a telephone number, but go on our website under burning permits, and it's a real interactive map. If you wanna find out if your county is uh, issuing burning permits for that day, they uh, update it by 10 o'clock in the morning, every morning, and then they, it's like every 10 minutes. But you can know, the answer is no, if, if it, your county is not being issued burning permits, and the department works with the local fire departments mm -hmm. as to whether there's burning conditions or not. Now, so you wanna make sure that burning is allowed. The other thing is we do prescribe burns, but you gotta remember, our folks are professionals. They do it on proper days that, you know, where it's safe to do it. They've they're done it for they've government. Got water backup. Exactly. Got now, the other thing is we want to remind everybody that it's critical that they find out if you're going to burn to make sure if there's a burning uh, permit issued and if the conditions are right. We're in the fire season right now. And our forest man division working with our local fire departments, they do a phenomenal job of battling fires. But we can all do our part by Maybe that, maybe that pile of brush would make a better bunny habitat or something versus burning it versus, or wait till the winter when you got snow cover. Let's yeah. think about doing things that, you know, at a better time of year, because we've had some huge fires. That one, the one up in the um, UP, the last one we had, you know, 30, 40,000 acres, that was caused by a lightning strike. So the less we can do as humans to not spread fire, the better off we can be. You know, you, we, could, we, could, we could start a little slogan there, only you can prevent forest fires, huh? <laughs> wow, well, you got to market that. I love it. <laughs> I'll try and get a patent on that bugger right now. Last uh, fall, an acquaintance told DNR uh, law enforcement was monitoring social media in effort to enforce game laws, especially antler point restrictions. And, and, uh, and, and I don't think anybody sits around and monitors that, but, but I know, um, I know there, was, there were a couple of instances where where even my family got involved with making a call to an officer because somebody had just patently done something illegal. Right, absolutely. We get complaints. And they brag about it on, on social media. Right. You're going right. to get caught. We yeah. get complaints come in to people exactly like you folks saw. Um, our officer will follow up on that. We'll take a complaint. Um, you know, a lot of it was Facebook and social media nowadays. People are posting a lot of things, and a lot of people are watching it. So we're getting more calls come in. So somebody sees something, maybe they know somebody that did something or whatever, so that we could complain that way. Let's get back to handguns real quick from Gaylord. Can I carry a handgun on my own property for uh, protection during the bow season? Uh, if you have a permit. If you got a CPL, you're good to go. You got, you're, you're, you're good to go because, because the uh, handgun laws supersede the game laws. That's correct. And that's, that's, that's a matter of um, legality. You know, hey. Bob, uh, let me follow up on that one, though, because we get a lot of people ask that. If I shoot a deer with my bow and I'm carrying my pistol under my CPL, and the deer is wounded and flopping, can I shoot it? No. No. You can, you can carry it for personal protection, but not any part of that hunt. Yep, yep, yeah, and that's the law. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is the law. Okay, uh, hey, let's go. I got a couple good questions right here, but we're gonna pick the folks from Hale, because that's, uh, that's where Kurt Wilson hails from, is Hale. Uh, is it true there's a wolf-coyote hybrid? And can you hunt it as a coyote? Well, that's kind of an iffy thing, isn't it? Right. We, a couple of years ago in the northern lower, we did see what what looked an awful lot like a, a wolf. It turned out the genetics showed that it was a coyote. There was probably some interbreeding going on. We fully expect that every now and again a wolf will make it across the ice into the northern lower. Right now, we don't have any evidence of any wolves in the northern lower. That doesn't mean that they aren't there. It's just that we don't have any evidence of it. Folks from Riverdale want to know how come the, those kids can shoot all those big bucks in September. Uh, before they mate? Well, you know, this is always an interesting question. It Let me is. line it out for folks. The independence and liberty hunt and the kid hunts up front, that accounts for about 3% of the harvest. The antlerless at the end accounts for about 3%. Muzzleloader is 7%. Antler less, or archery is 33%, and the rest is firearm. 
the ends don't make any difference whatsoever. Literally, it's in a couple of thousands of deer on both ends. It's, it's very small. If folks want to make a difference with regulations, they need to be filling, uh, talking about archery and firearm, not just because they don't like the ends. It, okay. It's just about yeah. that simple. Yeah, I, it's, and, and people feel very, very strongly, they're very strong opinions about it, and they're really split. In, and, and somehow you're, you've, you've got to make sense out of Solomon's baby sometimes, right? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing. People get mad when a kid shoots a nice deer at the same time that other people are looking at it and think, gosh, that's great, that kid had a wonderful experience. One thing just to remember, 80% of the hunting that's done is on private land. Oh, yeah. If you really, really feel strongly, you don't want a kid having any of those extra opportunities to spend time and be mentored by an adult, you don't have to let them on. That, Exactly. It's a very, very simple thing. I've had to describe that to a couple of folks. Hey, um, why don't we, uh, uh, let's, okay. Oh, I'm lost here. Just a sec. Just a sec. Well, Wassel, let's take this one. Why don't we go back to the day so uh, you shoot does only the last four days of the season? Well, that's somebody getting a half a story because we had one, one time in Michigan where you could only shoot does the last three days of the season. Pennsylvania had a last week doe mm -hmm. season and that sort of thing. But that was never really the case in Michigan. It was only once mm -hmm. in trying to take enough does, mm -hmm. correct? I mean, the, the, where I think the caller is probably going is why do we allow so much doe harvest in southern Michigan? We are still above goal in many parts of the uh, lower peninsula. And uh, there are probably more deer than we need still at the landscape level. Hey, and here's, here's a, he, uh, from Ottawa, rumor they found a bull shark in southern Lake Michigan. Is that true? <laughs> Not that I've heard. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. We do know that bull sharks can live for some period of time in fresh water. They've been found in, in uh, the, the Amazon and in the uh, St. Lawrence River. Um, but uh, I have never seen uh, a real documented one in Lake Michigan. Well, and I'm not going swimming in Lake Michigan, not till it warms up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Need a license to sell morel mushrooms? This question incidentally comes from the arguably, but they claim to be the mushroom capital of the state of Michigan, Mesick. Little town of music, one of one of the great towns in this. Nope, you don't need a license. You don't need a. I mean, people go out and harvest them, and they sell them. There's stands all over the sides of the roads. Okay. Um, person said from Acosta County, they wrote a letter about poaching deer to the uh, uh, to the one eight hundred poaching number. I don't know why they wrote a letter there, but has the DNR ever follow up on those letters? Yeah, you, you, see, you see bunches of them all the time, I'll bet. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess I, I misunderstood the question. They wrote a letter to the 1-800 number? Yeah, I, I, I didn't well, get that either. There may have been a, a social luck. media come in. We are taking it on social media now, too. And yes, absolutely, every call that comes in, we make a complaint on it, and an officer will follow up on it. And this, this is a good question, too, out of Brighton, and, and it really doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Why can you hunt deer from a, from a stand and off the ground, okay, but not turkeys with a gun from a stand? You're not supposed to hunt off the ground, apparently, for turkeys. Well, you can with a bow, bow yeah. or a crossbow, but right now, currently, not with a firearm. I, I don't recall ever hearing anybody got pinched for... No, not only that, but turkeys look up. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. So, yeah. There is that. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. Oh, here's one from Black Lake, and this is, this is a brutal one. Now, when will deer be managed for the deer hunter instead of farmers and insurance companies? Number one, anybody who tells you that the insurance companies have any input on, on deer, uh, deer numbers in this state is full of it. I was on the Natural Resources Commission for years, worked for the legislature, and I've yet to meet with an insurance company mm -hmm. to lobby any part of that. It just, they can charge you whatever they want based on the, based on the, uh, the damage, right. you know, they have to pay for. So I never even heard of it. But it is a rumor that, that has legs, and I don't understand it. I finally had to set one uh, newspaper uh, reporter who's a buddy of mine straight on that in, in lower Michigan. He's not done it since, which I explained it to him. So mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. but, but farmers. Well, let's go to farmers just for a second. As it turns out, agriculture is very important to the state of Michigan, and we are concerned about animal damage to producers. As well, those producers are providing food for, for wildlife. So we're sensitive to those concerns, but at the same time, as it turns out, farmers don't take a lot of deer on, on permits. They got better things to do than go out and shoot nuisance deer, uh, in, most, as a rule. Most farmers don't even enjoy any aspect of that. No, they don't. You might give them five permits. The routine is that you'll give them five and maybe they fill one or two. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I had to do that in an airport one time, and I thought, boy, this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, a lot of work on a hot summer night, yeah, I'll tell is. you. Uh, what happened to all the smelt in the Great Lakes? And, and we had another question, too. This one comes from Buckley, but uh, another question with the state of the salmon. So as long as we got smelt, and as long as we had a salmon question, Mark, the floor is yours. <laughs> All right. Um, well, <clears throat> smelt are still in the Great Lakes. They're not gone. They're still there. Um, their numbers are reduced from what they would have been um, back 30 years ago. Um, so they're still there. There are still places in Michigan where people go smelt dipping up in the UP. Um, and I know the St. Clair River down in Port Huron, that's another good spot. So there are still smelt around. Um, haven't even heard a few rumors of a few smelt being dipped on the Lake Michigan side this spring. Uh, so there are some there. They're just their numbers are not what they were 30 years because ago. Because they got eaten up. Right. And we don't see the big runs that we used to see. Um, and there's a, a number of different theories behind why that is. But the smelt have not gone extinct. They're still in Lake Michigan. They're still part of the forage base. Um, salmon and steelhead still eat them when they can find them. Um, so they're still an important species, but, uh, but, but they're not as prominent as they were years ago. And there's a question I was looking for. It's right on the screen in front of me. What's caused the deterioration of the salmon population in Lake Michigan? What's being done to restore and maintain it? Sure. Well, that's a very good question. Um, Excellent and, question. And the salmon, the salmon population in Lake Michigan is down. Uh, there's no, no ifs, ands, buts about that. It is down. Um, and basically, it's a food chain issue that is caused by the quagga mussel. The quagga mussel is a relative of the zebra mussel. It is only it's worse than the zebra came mussel. Came in on ships. Came in on in ballast water on freighters from uh, Asia and li can live anywhere in Lake Michigan. They can live in 800 feet of water. Zebra mussels don't go that deep, so they've basically outcompeted zebra mussels. And so these quagga mussels are out there filtering the water, taking the bottom right out of the food chain. So the plankton that would go to feed the alewives, that would go to feed the salmon, and so it's a food chain issue starting right at the bottom. Lake Michigan is much more sterile than it was 20 or 30 years ago. There's just not as many nutrients, so there's not as much plankton, so there's not as many bait fish, so there's not as many salmon. And you can't plant your way out of this if there's we no food. We cannot plant our way out of this. In, fa in fact, we've taken lessons from what happened in Lake Huron, okay? Lake Huron, we had a salmon crash to the point where they really haven't come back much in, you know, in the 12 years or so since the crash, all right? So um, we have cut back on Chinook stocking in Lake Michigan in order to, to try to walk the line. We still have some forage in Lake Michigan, so we still have a fishery. And what we're trying not to do is overwhelm what forage we have, what bait fish we have. So we're trying to conserve those so that we can continue our fishery on. Hopefully, we'll get some good environmental conditions. We'll get some good alewife year classes. Maybe we'll get these quagga mussels to start dying off a little bit, and, uh, and things will improve. Like everything else in nature, it needs to be fed. It, but it's got to have habitat. I do want to stress that you know, even though there are fewer salmon out there, there is still a very good, very vibrant fishery. And uh, even if salmon are down, we still have brown trout, steelhead, uh, lake trout. So there's, there's lots to do. And there's a lot of good fishing going on right now uh, for brown trout and steelhead near shore. We just heard one of the guys around here got into the brown trout pretty good over at Ludington mm -hmm. this weekend. Okay. If I have a turkey permit for the first spring season, can't use it, can I turn it in and get a tag for the second season? No. No? No. no. Okay. You might be able to turn it in for a 234. Nope. You can't turn in a tag. If you don't, if you have the tag, unless if you haven't bought it yet, you might be able to. If you haven't bought a tag, you, ha you don't have a tag. Yeah, right. you don't have. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Okay, and this person was convicted of a felony, didn't have any jail time 44 years ago. Can they hunt with a firearm or, or purchase or purchase or own uh, fire firearm? That's that's all under federal law and state law. Right. That doesn't have anything to do with DNR. Does what it? I suggest that they do right. That's that's out of the DNR hands. We'll sell them a license. It's just whether or not they can execute okay. the use of that. They need to contact the court that they were convicted and find out what their restrictions are about firearms. Yeah, I've seen some where it was all weapons, so that included bows. I've seen it where somewhere they allowed them to, you know, use a bow. So contact the court, talk to the prosecutor's office. Folks from elsewhere said Petoskey News reported you need a license to sell morels. 
Not that I'm aware of. I no. wonder if they printed that April 1st. And, well, it could <laughs> be. I mean, unless it's something to do with a land use um, order or a rule that I'm not aware of. Uh, no, that's there's not, nothing in the in the in the no. game laws or, or yeah, not right. in game laws. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, why do I have to buy a base license when I don't hunt small game? Uh, a guy from Gaylord wants to know. That's the way the legislature set it up. That's the way the legislator, leg, legislature set it up, and I guess you could always hunt small game. <clears throat> and and this, this comes from uh, Greenville. If I'm a CCW holder, uh, can I shine deer while I'm carrying? Yes. Mm -hmm. If it's legal to shine deer. Right. Just like we said earlier, the CPL laws supersede the game laws. However, again, you know, make sure that you're not using that inappropriately. Mm -hmm. you know, but you can have it, absolutely. That's your right, but just make sure that you don't try to use a take a deer, of course. Mm -hmm. And folks from Emmett, a little town in <coughs> Emmett, not Emmett County, I don't think. Can we pick ginseng? No. Ginseng you cannot pick. In fact, we probably... Private we, land? Private land, um, I think you can on private land, yes. Mm -hmm. But on state land, it would have to be under a land use permit, and we will not... I have never in my almost 26-year career heard where we actually issued a permit for uh, picking ginseng. Okay, in, in Indian River, interesting question out of Indian River, one of my favorite towns too. Is it legal to pick up uh, shipwreck uh, pieces on the beach from the water? No. no. That's our antiquities, no. Um, if something comes up on the beach, we ask that they report to the department, but you can't uh, uh, salvage any parts off of wrecks. I mean, we have, we have some um, beautiful shipwrecks around this state. A lot of people dive them. Um, our officers work very hard as far as maintaining and protecting those areas. And any of that, any of that stuff that comes up or they find, we need to know about. And, and, and Dean, I hate to keep blasting these off from you, but Russ, you can chime in on this. Can you use a rifle for coyotes in, South, in lower Michigan until November 14th? Absolutely. Absolutely. The only, the only uh, pro prohibition we have on using centerfire rifles is during the 15-day firearm deer season. Other than that, woodchuck hunting is a big popular one in southern Michigan. Coyotes, absolutely. Actually, you use a rifle for virtually anything except during the, right, during except the deer, season. During deer season. Well, traveling with ice fishing gear on a snowmobile, do you have to have a trail permit to go ice fishing? On a, uh, while traveling on the, on, on the ice? Um, Social media question. Okay, if you're, if you're on the ice uh -huh. and solely using it for fishing, right. going to your you know, drop-off location, your vehicle, out to your site and back, no, you don't need a trail permit. But what I caution people is, don't go out to your site, you get bored, I'm going to run a mile down the yeah. lake to, to the restaurant and grab something and come back. No, as long as you're just using it just for the act of fishing, you're yeah. good to go. There you go, there you go. Sheboygan, hey, a couple of, couple of questions. It's a couple of disciplines, too. This is a good one. I love going to Sheboygan. It's, it's a great town up there. Uh, why don't we plant more sturgeon and Burton mullet on, in consecutive years instead of every, every other or every five years? Actually, there's a great hatchery program going on right there now, isn't there? Yeah, I don't work directly with that hatchery, but uh, as far as I know, they're stocking a lot of sturgeon. Sturgeon out there. for tomorrow, folks are stocking stocking <clears throat> fish all the time in those systems. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in fact, if you want to know how many fish and when, uh, get a hold of uh, uh, Sturgeon for Tomorrow, which is one of the great organizations in the state. In fact, uh, it, it is truly a conservation organization to be proud of. Um, and hey, Russ, the same person wants to know, and they're going to get a twofer on this one, how many bear are killed in dens by wolves? Is there any research done on that? Some. There's no question that some are killed, and there are bear hunters in the UP that like to show me pictures of wolves dragging bears out of den. So it happens. Uh -huh. Do we know whether it's a serious concern? No, we don't know whether it's a serious concern. I doubt that it is, frankly. Be any pla uh, planting of northern pike in Platte Lake in Benzie County? No, we have, we have not planted any pike uh, in Platte Lake in a long time. Um, Platte Lake has a, a pretty good population of northern pike without stocking. There's enough habitat in Platte Lake that they can reproduce on their own pretty good in there. Okay, okay. Uh, who takes care of dead deer? This is along 66. The folks from Barrington want to know. Um, anyway, uh, but, but that's a good question of who's in charge of dead deer along the highway. Rural commissions. And okay. that was one of the reasons why the legislature passed this new um, salvage permit uh, roadkill bill is to help with that, you know, so people can pick up fresher deer. Okay, and Aranac County, why do we berm roads after a timber sale? Uh, why can't they be used? 
You know, we need a good forester to answer that question, don't well, we? And a lot of that, Bob, is they open up an area for <laughs> access to be able to timber it off, but we don't want to open up extra trails, and especially if there's erosion issues on that. So under those permits, I mean, that's a big part of what the forester has to do to burn those roads back off so that we don't create more areas and more problems. Um, some of them they leave open, depending on, it all depends on the area where they're, where they're working, mm -hmm. that, okay. uh, up to the department. Mark, give us a quick update for Oakland County folks want to know what, what's going on with Asian carp. Uh, we're pretty much at a standstill. Um, they are still uh, lurking in the uh, Chicago Ship Canal. Um, but we have not had any reports that they've gotten past the electrical barrier that's operated by the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, other than a few, you know, we've had a few that have gotten through over the years that have been picked up in nets, but there's been nothing recent. Um, you know, they're still a huge threat. We're still terrified that they could get into our Great Lakes. But as of right now, as far as we know, they're still not here. Okay. And let's keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? When dogs are chasing deer, can you shoot them, Dean? Folks from Traverse City want to know. No, not an average citizen can't. Uh, report those to us. Let us know what it's, where it's happening. Call your local animal control. You know, those are dogs running at large, but a uh, law enforcement officer can, but a private citizen cannot. It's any place, Russ, that you could think of, uh, and, and this call is from Mason County, where folks could go to the UP and have a good chance of seeing a, a moose like, like they do elk, you know, up in the elk country places. I, I see them pretty frequently between Munising, or between uh, Marquette and Ishpeming on, uh, what is that, what is that road there, 29? 28. 28. 28. Yeah. I see them pretty often on the, on the south side of the road. And, 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 and areas near Covington and stuff like that. Right. But, but it's, still, it's still seeing a moose is, is not a thing you can count on. No. Hey, go, look at all the bears we have in this state and how many people have never seen right. a bear in a while. The other thing they might think about is going by the Crystal Falls office because those guys do see them pretty often from the road over, and, over in the Falls. Yeah, have some pretty, so. pretty sharp conservation officers up there and wildlife officers. And, and uh, anyway, uh, that's... Yeah, they, they, they'll, they'll tell you where they've mm -hmm. been seeing them anyway. Uh, in the future, do you think you'll need a permit to kayak or uh, canoe in Michigan? Uh, Folks from Cadillac want to know. Probably talking about having to register uh, your canoes or kayaks. And that is something that we have talked about. Uh, we have to register all other watercraft, basically. And that is something that's been talked about, but I don't see anything right on the horizon that's going to happen. Bob, the other, another aspect to that, they may be talking about rivers like the Pier Marquette oh, and Pine right. River that have uh, federal, um, in part of the Manistee National Forest, right. um, boat launches. So if it's a federal boat launch, um, you do have to have a permit at certain times of year to launch a canoe or kayak. Um, but that's only in federal boat launches that are operated by the, by the National Forest. Um, so if you want to float those rivers, you have to check with the National Forest. Okay, from Traverse City, Mark, uh, this, this, is, this is a great, great question uh, about the pier in West Bay and Traverse City um, and the new lake trout uh, laws. You know what they're talking about there? Uh, well, I... Information about the new, or about the pier on uh, West Bay and Traverse City? Uh, okay, well, there's a couple different things there. Um, we, we have been um, discussing with the city of Traverse City about building a new fishing pier uh, well, a new pier at the mouth of the Boardman River, that would be an outstanding fishing pier. Um, and we're hoping to uh, get some grant funding to build that. It would be a great place to fish for salmon, steelhead, whitefish, smallmouth bass, walleye, perch. Uh, we're really excited about that, and we're hope, we hope that comes to fruition. Um, the other part of that question would be lake trout changes in Grand Traverse Bay for regulations. And yes, there were some uh, regulation changes that just went through. Um, with the NRC meeting just a couple of weeks ago. You can get on the website to check those out. I believe the, the, the limit went from three fish to two fish. And I believe the, the, the slot limit is you can keep from 15 to 27 inches. You can't keep from 27 to 34. And then you could keep mm -hmm. one over 34 Real trophy fish, if then. you get a, a trophy like that. Oh. I believe that's right. But check on the website to confirm that. Good folks from Converse want to know, why is there a closed season on coyotes? Is there a closed season on coyotes? There's a closed season of a couple of months in the spring when, when coyotes are in the den. 
and there are a variety of reasons. Not all states do it that way. We do, do that not only to, to maybe do something for coyotes, which don't need a lot of help, but also to keep folks from harassing other animals that are out nesting or breeding at that time, grouse or bears or, or, or other animals that we just as soon not have harassed. Right, Un unless a coyote is doing, about to be doing, doing damage. Doing or about to do you damage, you can, you can lay them down. Right. Yeah. You, can't, you can't go out specifically on to Correct. Right. They have to let, let them hunt you a little bit, so. Okay, Livonia, when will DNR stop tournament fishing? I, I don't think there's any plans for that. We, we have no plans no. to stop tournament fishing. And most of those are catch and release anyway, which is... Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of tournaments. So you have salmon tournaments on the Great Lakes, and those are, those are catch and kill tournaments. Um, but a lot of the walleye and, and right. bass tournaments are catch and release tournaments. Um, they're a vibrant part of the sport fishing community, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, we have no plans to not allow people to hold tournaments. No. Hey, interesting question from Lyndon down in uh, Genesee County. Um, so can you hunt small game with a 22 lead bullet in a steel shot waterfall area? No. <laughs> no, but steel, uh, steel shot is, uh, steel shot area is, is just steel shot. And we got a couple of quick questions uh, here, and, and I guess we're on our way out. Uh, what's, what's causing, the, I guess we're all on our way out. That's philosophical, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but what's causing the decrease in muskrats over the last several years? I haven't heard of any. I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of... I've heard a lot of people complaining about all the muskrats around their ponds. Well, that, and because fur prices have been high the last several years, not last season, but the couple preceding, it's, you know, people are hitting them pretty hard for... For, for Riverdale, they want to know, does DNR think we have too many wolves in the UP? Well, that's why the DNR declared a season on them. We want, there's plenty of wolves in the UP, but at the same time, what we want is the ability to effectively manage wolves, just like we manage everything else using that North American model that's been successful and vibrant for 120 years. Russ Mason, Dean Molnar, Mark Tonello, and Dave Hopp, Katie Kane. Ed Shaw from the, from the Carl T. Johnson Center. We gotta thank you so much for, for taking the questions, answering the questions. Folks, there are plenty we just e couldn't even get to. It went through as fast as we could. But remember, the only place you're gonna catch a show like this where people care about uh, your hunting and fishing is right here on CMU Public Television. Uh, do what you can to help CMU out. I wanna thank everybody for, uh, for being here, Courtney Brooks for exec producing this thing, Matt Ozanich as a director. Uh, I appreciate everything you do. Remember to get out and enjoy this great old state of Michigan, and we'll see you again in about six months in October for another Ask the DNR. <laughs>